time for Ilya Gilead of Eco Machine Incubator. Welcome to Eco Summit, Ilya. Thank you. Thank you, Jan, and thank you for the uh, invitation. Um, well, I guess before I start, uh, if, if I can uh, uh, leave a little thought with you as I, as I explain our business model and what we're trying to address. Uh, we stand here on top of two miracles of modern engineering, and I don't mean the Emirates uh, cable car or the very big yurt across the river, the O2 arena. What I mean is the Siemens Crystal Center uh, itself, a zero carbon building with uh, the latest in building technology. But underneath that is the miracle of uh, modern engineering or Victorian engineering, which is the, uh, the, the Victoria Docks, which at the time were the biggest uh, man-made uh, water uh, uh, basin in the world and many other things that happened in, the, in that era. And the reason I point to that paradox is that um, uh, when you look at uh, uh, engineering and let's call it hardware for the purposes of this presentation, when you look at where it is today and you look at historically, uh, we are now at a time where due to uh, uh, the development in uh, rapid prototyping, 3D printing, materials science, and a number of other fields, we are in the middle of a renaissance of, of uh, advanced engineering uh, uh, capabilities. Yet when you look at the investment uh, uh, environment, most of the investment goes elsewhere. So th as an economist, uh, uh, that to me is an interesting paradox. From a social perspective, that's a dangerous paradox because where most of the big social problem today, uh, uh, problems of today are food, population growth, climate change, uh, aging population. These are things that are crying out for technological solutions, yet the investment is not there. So intellectually, broadly, we, we play within this space. Uh, and I'll tell you where the bear comes in to, uh, later on. But how do, we, uh, how do we address this problem, or how do we work within this problem? Well, Ecomachines is, uh, is a hybrid business model between an accelerator and an early stage VC. We focused on startups broadly in hardware, advanced engineering, uh, high value manufacturing. And uh, when I say a hybrid, uh, you know, we all know what the VC is. But I guess when I was starting the company, what was very interesting for me was the development of the A, the accelerator models, uh, first in the US, now here, in software and digital media, things like Techstars, Y Combinator, uh, Seed Camp in, 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 over in London. Uh, and also the, the extent that they've combined uh, uh, kind of a new metaphor for development of startups, uh, such as a Lean startup. In terms of the sectors of interest, very much things that we, uh, we meet, we've been talking about uh, today, so I won't spend time on that. But I guess the, our differentiator, the important uh, uh, part of our business model that we're looking to prove, is the accelerator program through which we bring in uh, companies. So what, what is our claim? Well, our claim is that uh, broadly, by and large, hardware companies in the energy and clean tech space take too much money and take too long to develop to the point of, of revenues. And we think that there's ways of uh, uh, not, certainly not making it uh, similar to, to, to web companies. Uh, hardware is harder. But uh, there is ways in which we can use uh, uh, best practice from other areas, including from, uh, from the Lean Startup Method, that we can accelerate the development of these companies. So what do we do? We uh, invest up to about £100,000 at, uh, at seed level. We, we leverage that with grant funding, with uh, other angel finance. But we wrap around that a six to nine month accelerator program. To our knowledge, this is the most intensive accelerator program available at the moment in, in Europe. Uh, what we introduce in that is uh, in a, uh, uh, the expertise of mentors and advisors we have on our board, industry networks, investor networks, and the ultimate product, the product that we are trying to develop, ultimately, of course, we hope for an exit and an IPO or a trade sale, but the product that we can help the company develop is an investable proposition so they can get the funding necessary for the next stage of development. Again, a differentiator between us and accelerators, if you see us as an accelerator, is that we are able to follow on our funding. One of uh, the first company in which we invested last year has so far raised $20 million after our initial investment, and we certainly think that that can be done with some of the other businesses. We're based in central London, just down the river, across the Isle of Dogs, onto the other side at St. Catherine's Docks. That gives us a really cool location with great views, but more importantly, it gives us a location that is attractive both for companies in the UK and elsewhere in Europe, which provides access to uh, financial markets, it provides access to industry, uh, industrial networks, it is a friendly and easy place to jump into the US market, but it is also a place where you can uh, build links with uh, global corporates, many of which are either listed in London or have major operations uh, here. 
We have a multinational and multidisciplinary team. I myself am a serial entrepreneur. I've uh, done a number of things from uh, industrial high voltage, medium voltage installations in Mozambique and South Africa through to MedTech in Cambridge. And most recently, I started a company called uh, Cambridge IP, which uh, is an IP strategy specialist. Uh, the other members of the team have uh, experience in uh, metallurgy, heavy industrial uh, 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 equipment, uh, building industry, uh, power generation, uh, and so on. On the advisory board, we joined with people, again, from, from a, a, a variety of experience, in, including from investment banking and uh, VC. But I think the most important part of uh, where we have leverage when we try to help companies is our mentor team, which uh, you can find it on the website, but it, it really presents an enormous... Uh, uh, resource that we can provide to our uh, to the startups that join our company. Uh, I started Eco Machines in January 2013. I raised the fund uh, in uh, May June. Since then, we've done five investments. Uh, two of uh, well, one of them you saw yesterday, recycling technologies. Qbot will present afterwards. We'll give Matt very hard questions. Uh, but in addition to that, uh, so that's robotics and uh, waste to energy. In addition to that, uh, well, we have a company that's in the uh, uh, variable speed drive space. Their uh, uh, initial uh, results show up to 30% energy savings in a cement uh, factory uh, context, so lots of interesting things happening in cement, but also in the automotive space and in the uh, uh, nanotechnology with material science space. Uh, now, why are we bullish on the opportunities in energy and clean tech? Well, if you look at the data, uh, the VC industry primarily has focused around software, digital media, so you know, pre-money valuations and other metrics Incredible things have been happening in that space. In the energy and clean tech space, it's been moving in the opposite direction. But when we look within different sectors, you can see that when you start looking at the segments, that uh, interesting things are happening and there is scope for, for, for investment. For us as an investor, quite importantly, there is what we can call bubble inoculation. The bubble has already burst in energy and clean tech, so what we've got now is sensible conversations. But very importantly for us, there is the ability to apply something like the lean startup method to uh, uh, to, to companies in this space. Now, I've only got a minute left, so I won't spend too much time on that, but for those of you that have been following the digital media software space, you know that Lean Startup has become this great uh, almost religion on the West Coast and a little bit here. I'm not trying to fetishize it, but uh, it provides a great uh, uh, heuristic for entrepreneurs, easy rules that they can follow as they build their business models to avoid that too long, too much money problem that companies in our space have. The key elements, minimum viable product, continuous deployment, split testing, actional metrics, and pivot the business model when it doesn't work. We think that this can be applied to the uh, uh, hardware uh, space using virtual prototyping, rapid prototyping technologies, but also in the B2B context, scenario testing, working with clients, working with the industry partners uh, in a slightly different manner uh, to help companies uh, get pre-commitment from the market to, the, to their business model and moving forward. So very quickly, some lessons that uh, we've had in our very brief existence. Uh, well, the promising companies for us are not those that tell us, well, here is a gazillion dollar market. There are many of those markets. But what we find interesting are the ones that are hyper-focused on a specific market segment that it is, we can see realistically how they can gain significant traction uh, in that space in a reasonable amount of time, because that is what will establish the company. Out of that, with an established market where people see you as the market leader in this nice, small, attractive market niche, you can do many other things. That they're close to a minimum viable product, something that we can start testing with clients, even if it's not a fully commercial product. And an ability by the clients to articulate pivots on their business model, should they not be successful with plan A, that they're not obsessed uh, with one single direction. Um, a point that was made earlier, uh, I'll put it in another way, that there is an ability to deliver real and significant benefits to a, to a real client and in a B2B context at the same price with many more benefits because you just don't want to get into a game of trying to change a big corporate's uh, budget lines and uh, arguing with the CFO that you should be spending really much more on that space. So really, the entry point is that it needs to be at the same price as an existing product and much bigger benefits. And uh, I guess a way to summarize this, well, what is the low capex model uh, for, for your company? That, that doesn't have to mean that, uh, uh, well, uh, uh, you don't have the resources to create the technology, but it is innovative use of partnerships, of project finance, of uh, uh, other funding models that can get the company uh, to where it needs to be. 
And what I'll leave you with is that what we most of all want to avoid in startups is that having gone through this extremely complicated three, four, five, six, seven year <laughs> route, we end up in uh, the uh, location, uh, situation of the overambitious uh, salmon that uh, 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 ends up being eaten by the big bear. In other words, we don't want companies to invest in companies that are making very expensive market research for, uh, uh, for, large, uh, for large corporates. I'll leave it at that. Great, thank you, Ilian. Do you have a question for Ilian? One is coming up quickly. Joe. I think you alluded um, in your talk to um, sort of a focus on business to business. And um, I was just wondering do you see a sort of um, an ability to use this method on um, B2C type uh, businesses, sort of lean? hardware-based companies? Well, I think it's ultimately the masochist in me that is uh, going for B2B. In a sense, it is easier with, uh, in a B2C context because you can have more people to iterate with. It's much more like lean startup in a uh, digital context. So, uh, uh, but in terms of where in, uh, our feeling is where the really scalable opportunities are that are interesting from in the context of energy, clean tech, low carbon uh, innovation, you have to be working on a B2B context. I mean, if you just look at energy efficiency, if you compare the efficiency that we get from residential market, introducing smart meters and all that, and the difficulty of getting that, because you have to change people's behavior, and if you look at energy efficiency in the industrial market, just to work with a metallurgical uh, uh, client or, or a cement plant, the impact you get is much, much higher. But yeah, it's a bit more difficult. All right, thank you very much, Ilian. Thank you. <laughs>